Hello, sweet friend, Kelsey here. Welcome back to my home. Today, I invite you to sit down and relax with your favorite cup of coffee or tea and join me for some highlights of a typical day here at Seed and Sparrow Homestead. Today's first order of business is making some loaves of bread. This recipe is more of a colonial style bread loaf. Um, it is a brown loaf. This recipe uses molasses. So I have a whole bunch of butter and rolled oats and molasses going into the bowl here. And as always, you will be able to find all of today's recipes down in the description. Adding in some brown sugar here, and I'm gonna grab some boiling water from the stove to add in as well. Mix this all up until it's really well combined, and we are going to allow it to sit for about 15 minutes. waiting for that. I'm going to get the dishes taken care of. I had been doing pretty well at getting the kitchen put to bed every night and having the dishes done, counters cleaned off. I just work better um, with a clean slate in the morning. I seem to get more accomplished, um, but last night that did not happen, so we're taking care of it now. Moving back to our bread, I am adding in the salt and the yeast now, mixing that up well. Adding in our flour gradually here. This recipe calls for six cups, but it is a very wet dough. It will start to pull away from the bowl here, as you can see, but it's going to be sticky. You just have to trust the process. Gonna turn out the dough onto the surface here, a little bit of flour, kneading it for just a minute or two and shaping into a ball. Placing our dough back into a greased bowl, covering and allowing it to rise until doubled about an hour. Now most of this morning you did not see, I was editing my garden tour, which was uploaded this past Tuesday. Go check that one out. But after that, it was on to the next task, which was cleaning up the toy room. Now, this is just a mild <laughs> disaster. Um, there are some days where you cannot even walk. You are lucky to find a clear spot on the floor to place your foot. <laughs> so this is nothing, but it still needed to be done. I always find that my kids will play for longer amount of time on their own if they have like a clean slate. If there's too much laying around, they just, I think, get overwhelmed and don't know what to choose to do. So everything needs to go back into their space. Now, Grant is sleeping right now. It is the best time to get things like this done. Otherwise, as I 
do the work, it gets undone very quickly. But Grant is my engine-loving, wheel-loving boy. Anything with an engine and wheels, he adores. And Eleanor is my dinosaur loving girl. She always has these set up around the house in different scenarios, and it's really cute to see. This is much better. I set up a train track for when Grant wakes up. I like to do this if I have time, gives him something to do when I know I still have a lot of work to do during the rest of the day when he is up. But while he sleeps, I'm moving on to more things that are easier to get done when I don't have little ones in tow. One of those things is mopping the floor. And I am convinced there is no better way to do this than on your hands and knees with some rags. If you have a good mop recommendation though, go ahead and drop that in the comments. I'm convinced they all just push dirt around and really accomplish nothing. Moving on to more tidying up around the house. Always putting the blankets and the pillows back that the kids have used for forts. I was just talking with my older sister the other day about how the older we get, the more pillows we seem to acquire and we're just drawn to them. I don't know if that's true for anyone else, but it applies to us. We're drawn to pillows and want them all. But something that I have found that helps my pillow addiction is pillow covers. It was a new thing to me that I discovered in the last two years. And it's nice because you don't have to spend as much money. You can very easily freshen up the space for the seasons and you don't have all of these pillows to store everywhere. It is quite a frivolous thing, but pillows make a space cozy to me. Moving on back to our bread, it has doubled. So I am going to get this out and we're going to divide it into two loaves, shape them and let them rise again. Onto some outdoor chores. I need to uncover all of my seedlings here. I'm in the process of hardening them off, acclimating them to the outdoors so I can get them in the ground. Hopefully by the end of this week, the garden will be fully planted. Tending to our feathered friends, letting all of the ladies and the two gentlemen out of their coop and into their run and getting them fed for the day.
Now, anytime I go outside, even if it was supposed to be for something quick, I always seem to get distracted and drawn to the garden and find myself spending quite a bit of time there. Right now we have columbine blooming, the foxglove is getting ready to bloom, there are rose bushes that are almost in bloom, admiring all of the little baby apples that will hopefully someday be applesauce. A full bed of strawberries that are setting off their blooms and one day very soon we will be preserving them except not into jams and jellies because you all know I already have way too many of those already. Checking in on all of the seeds that I had planted recently. This is a bed of green beans and we have quite a few popping up. Admiring the last of the spring bulbs, the alliums in all of their glory. Walking back to the house, I stumbled on some buttercups in the lawn. When I was little, my Nana used to tell me that if you pick these and hold them underneath your chin, and if you see a reflection of yellow, it means that you love butter. And it's definitely true for me. I love my butter. Back inside, our bread has risen, so we're gonna get this into the oven. Eleanor and I decided that we wanted a treat this afternoon, so we're gonna make some muffins, and this is a recipe I am experimenting with. It is a ricotta cheese and blueberry lemon muffin. So I had a bowl there of my dry ingredients, it was some flour, baking powder, baking soda, salt, and sugar. And then I threw in this bowl, some ricotta cheese, a whole bunch of butter, and some eggs. I'm also adding in some lemon juice and some maple syrup. For my sweetener. If you don't like maple syrup, you could just use sugar or coconut sugar, whatever you like. Also adding in some vanilla. I am adding in my flour now, and like I said, this was a little bit of an experiment, and the batter, while I knew it was going to be thick, was a bit too thick for my liking, so I added in a little bit of milk until it was the consistency that I desired. Now I'm adding in a whole bunch of blueberries here. I'm using frozen blueberries. You can use fresh, you can also use another type of fruit if you'd like. Scooping these into my cupcake liners and allowing these to bake, it took about 25 to 30 minutes and they turned out wonderful. I was really pleased with them, so you'll find the recipe for these down below. You can eat these as is. I decided to make a glaze for them. I just combined some powdered sugar and lemon juice until it was the consistency I wanted and poured it over top. And these were delicious, super moist because of that ricotta cheese, really light and fluffy still, and just the right amount of sweet. Now, if you wanted, I'm sure you could turn this into a blueberry muffin loaf, a loaf of bread. I think you would just need to bake them for a bit longer, probably closer to 45 minutes to an hour until a toothpick comes out clean. <laughs> Are they yummy? Yeah. And there you have it, the approval of Eleanor. Grant is up from his nap. 
being his super sweet, snuggly self. I love capturing these moments, but don't be fooled thinking it's all sunshine and roses. Over here, I had to play referee many times in breakup fights and redirect a lot. I want to make sure I'm keeping it real for you guys. I had somewhere to go this evening, so I got myself a bit more put together, got my hair done, and I had a little bit of free time, so I wanted to do something fun. I had found these beautiful white tulips at a local produce grocery store. They sometimes buy in like surplus bouquets, and I got, I think there was at least 30, if not 40 tulips here. And I got them all for $2.50. So I quick snagged them up and I decided to make a few bouquets for around the house today. On to tonight's dinner. I asked my husband, Matt, what he wanted. And usually I get a, you know, whatever's fine. I like whatever you make. But tonight he actually gave me an idea. He said, I really like some chicken carbonara. So that's what I'm making. I have some chicken that I cut up and cooked with some garlic and then onion powder. And I crumbled in some bacon that was left over from this morning. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make the sauce, which is just some eggs some milk and Parmesan cheese and salt and pepper. Now this is just my own version of carbonara. I'm not sure this is at all how they do it traditionally but this is how I've always done it. So I've just cooked some pasta. I'm putting that into my pan here and I'm allowing everything to get nice and hot. After everything is nice and piping hot, I'm taking it off of the heat and I'm going to add in 
my sauce mixture. You don't want it too hot or else you're gonna end up with scrambled eggs. We don't want that. So it's important to remove it from the heat and you're going to quickly toss everything together and it becomes this really nice creamy sauce. Eleanor and I are going to get our dining room table set ready for when Matt comes home from work. If I'm being completely honest, we very rarely eat here. Most nights it's dinner on the couch. We have a small home and a lot of times our table is just used for projects and storage and plants and the like. But tonight it's cleared off, so we're going to use it. I want to thank you for joining me today for a bit of a day in the life here on the homestead. I hope this brought you a bit of peace, relaxation, and enjoyment to your day. I encourage you all to cherish your home and cherish your family and go and enjoy God's beautiful creation in all of its spring glory. Summer will be here before we know it. Blessings on your coming week, friend. I will see you next time. Take care.